Paolo Freire's philosophy of education, key concepts. First of all, Paolo Freire was born in Recife, Brazil and raised in a middle-class family. He grew up through the Great Depression and outward symbols, such as his father always wearing a tie and having a German-made piano in their home, pointed to the family's middle-class heritage, but stood in contrast to their actual conditions of poverty. Reflecting on their situation, Freire noted, We shared the hunger, but not the class. After completing secondary school, and with gradual improvement in his family's financial situation, he was able to enter university and became a teacher. Through his early years, working with impoverished youth, Freire became convinced that traditional pedagogy was oppressive and dehumanizing. Thus, he worked to develop a pedagogy that could liberate through conscientization. In the 1960s, he led a massive popular education movement in Brazil to deal with massive illiteracy. By 1963 to 1964, his methods have spread and there were courses for coordinators in all Brazilian states with the aim of reaching 2 million illiterates. Freire was imprisoned following the 1964 coup d'état, as the new regime considered his teaching to be subversive. On his release, he went into exile and was unable to return to Brazil until 1979. In what follows, I will briefly sketch the key concepts of Freire's philosophy of education, which he developed in his seminal work titled, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. On Banking System of Education In Pedagogy of the Oppressed, Freire states that traditionally, education is framed as an act of depositing, in which the students are the depositories and the teacher is the depositor. The task of the teacher, in traditional education, Freire argues, is to fill the students with the content of his narration content, which is detached from reality, disconnected from the totality that engendered them and could give them significance. This type of education, he believes, is suffering from narration sickness. He suggests that in such schools, the task of the student is to receive, memorize, and repeat. This, he believes, turns them into receptacles to be filled by the teacher. Hence, in such an environment, teachers are active while students are passive members of the classroom community. Freire argues that the interests of the two are different in such relationship. Here, Freire argues that teachers promote the goal of the oppressors by depositing information into the students. It is this manner of education that Freire describes as the banking system of education. Freire then created a list of items that he says show how schools and classrooms can be evaluated. If a school or classroom can be defined by the following categories, then they represent the banking concept of education. This list includes 1. The teacher teaches and the students are taught. 2. The teacher knows everything, and the students know nothing. 3. The teacher thinks and the students are thought about. 4. The teacher talks and the students listen meekly. 5. The teacher disciplines and the students are disciplined. 6. The teacher chooses and enforces his choice, and the students comply. 7. The teacher acts and the students have the illusion of acting through the action of the teacher. 8. The teacher chooses the program content, and the students, who were not consulted, adapt to it. 9. The teacher confuses the authority of knowledge with his own professional authority, which he sets in opposition to the freedom of the students. 10. The teacher is the subject of the learning process, while the pupils are mere objects. Fruit claims that education based on this model, which he calls the banking annuals the students' creative power and serves the interests of the oppressors. He further asserts that education, as the exercise of domination stimulates the credulity of students, with the ideological intent, 
often not perceived by educators, of indoctrinating them to adapt to the world of oppression. He explains that the banking concept assumes a person to be merely in the world, not with the world or with others, the individual is a spectator, not recreator. He suggests that the banking system does not see a person as a conscious being, which he calls corpo-conscient. For in the banking system, a person is rather the possessor of a consciousness, an empty mind passively open to the reception of deposits of reality from the world outside. On problem-posing pedagogue, ideal method of education. As we can see, Freire is widely known for his radical educational ideas called critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy is described as an educational movement guided by the passion and principle to help students develop consciousness of freedom, recognize authoritarian tendencies, and connect knowledge to power and the ability to take constructive action. Arguing against the banking concept of education, Freire argues that education must begin with the solution of the teacher-student contradiction by reconciling the poles of the contradiction so that both are simultaneously or at the same time teachers and students. It is necessary, for Freire, that the educational goal of deposit-making is replaced with the posing of the problems of human beings in their relations with the world. Education based on problem-posing ensures active teachers and active students within the classroom and the global community. The interests of both the teachers and the students, then, within the problem-posing classroom, become the same. In fact, Freire maintains that problem-posing education aims at the emancipation of those who have been subjected to domination. Freire claims that problem-posing education enables teachers and students to become subjects of the education process by overcoming authoritarianism and alienating intellectualism. It also enables people to overcome their false perception of reality. This overcoming of the false perception of reality is considered the true measurement of growth. It is thus obvious that, as Freire suggests, the banking concept entails intellectual alienation and prevents growth. On dialogue, a critical tool in ideal education. Freire argues that freedom from alienation is impossible without dialogical relations between the student and the teacher. For Freire, it is only dialogue that ensures student-teacher relationship in which the teacher is no longer merely the one who teaches, but one who is himself taught in dialogue with the students, who in turn while being taught, also teach. They become jointly responsible for a process in which all grow. Freire also argues that dialogue promotes critical thinking because it is only through questioning the problems in our lives that we can take steps to remake them. Therefore, to be an active participant in the community, one needs to be in constant dialogue with the state and within the state, that is, with the other members of the state. It is therefore through dialogue that we can attain critical consciousness. But it must be noted that for Freire, critical consciousness does not only include apprehending the inequalities in one's life, but also taking action in order to change them. Critical consciousness, then, entails both consciousness and praxis taking practical action to deal with oppressive realities in life. Therefore, Freire believes that the problem-posing method along with critical consciousness and praxis lead to education as the practice of freedom. In sum, the central theme of Freire's pedagogy is critical consciousness and praxis, that is, the act of becoming aware of inequalities and taking action to change them. On democratic education Freire believes that freedom from the authoritarian education leads to growth and hence the creation of a true democratic society. For Freire, societies and individuals can only grow where they are provided with such an opportunity. This growth does not favor the oppressor and, therefore, 
the oppressor tends to manipulate growth through intellectual censorship. Freire opines that the authoritarian anti-dialogue violates the nature of human beings, their process of discovery, and it contradicts democracy. Hence, dialogue, for Freire, helps us denounce the structures of oppression and seek a less unjust, less cruel, more democratic, less discriminatory, less racist, less sexist world. Lastly, according to Freire, education for democracy requires freedom from the authoritarian relationship. And for Freire, it can only happen if we, through dialogue and critical thinking, challenge the oppressor and in so doing create a democratic society where people willingly engage in never-ending dialogues, listen to each other, ask questions, critically think, take positions in regard to these questions, and in so doing oppose the inequalities in their lives. This is what Freire calls active learning.